Good morning. I'm Edwin Keller, pastor of St. Stephen Evangelical Church, and we thank you so much for watching us on television. And if you're looking for a church home, we would love to have you in our church home. And I think you would feel welcome. And I thank you now for your time that you spend watching us. And we pray that God would bless you in every way. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you and praise you for your presence with us. We thank you for each one that is here. We thank you for each one that is listening by television or by CD. And we pray that all things would be done to your glory. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. We're going to talk this morning about redemption. Um, so many of us, we, we use these big words and fail to recognize the impact of the power that they have over us. Now, 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, in the 21st verse, and I know all of you know it by heart. Um, but, for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now, he didn't do this for no reason. In other words, when we were made the righteousness of God in Christ, he gave us another job. Look at the 20th verse. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. So in other words, an ambassador is somebody in the natural that we know of. An ambassador of a country is somebody that represents his country in a foreign land. Now, the Bible says we are ambassadors of Christ. So I'm here to represent him. Um, not make him any better, but to allow people to see that this makes a difference in my life. In other words, I am the righteousness of God in Christ, not because of anything I've done, but because of all that Jesus has done. And when I became the righteousness of God, then my job is to represent the one that made me righteous, Jesus. I am an ambassador of his. It is my job, and I say this not lightly, but it is also my privilege to represent him everywhere I go. And you know, this is, when you first get born again, when you first get saved, you, this is kind of hard to do. But when we recognize the fact that I am the righteousness of God in Christ, what, what does this entail? In other words, I can go to God anytime I want to and have an audience with him. He doesn't tell me, wait, I got somebody more important than you that I need to talk to. The Bible tells us when I become an ambassador of God through Christ Jesus, he says, come boldly. Come to the throne expecting me to be there and to receive you and to know what you want and to accomplish what you want. You see, but the problem is that most of us feel like that I am righteous or not righteous by the things that I say or by the things that I do. How many of you know that has nothing whatsoever to do with it? I have been made righteous through Christ Jesus. 
But you see, it's hard to understand this because we have been taught all of our life, you know, you don't deserve this. You, you need to do something to deserve something. Amen? Amen? I mean, I was taught that all my life. Who do you think you are? You got to do something to be accepted. Yeah, well, we do. We got to accept Jesus. I have got to come to the place to where I make him my Lord and Savior. And at that moment, everything else is accomplished because I might not deserve it, but it's mine anyway. He's given it to me. Um, think about this thing. Uh, look at Colossians, the first chapter, in the 13th verse. Who hath? Hath is past tense. Who has already delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son? How many of you know we didn't deserve this? I didn't do anything at all to deserve God being this good to me. And, and, you know, I mean, it's hard for the natural man to understand God. Um, the Bible says, if we are a natural man, then the things of God are foolishness to us. Because the things of God are spiritually discerned. We know them by what's inside. Not because of what I see, what I feel, what I hear. But you see, when Christ redeemed me, he paid everything that I owed. You know, I mean, he paid, he went into hell and he paid every, every penalty that I owed. I heard a preacher say one day that um, Jesus didn't go into hell because God didn't owe Satan anything. True. You did. Amen? Amen. God didn't owe him nothing. But I owed him heaps. And you say, he, he didn't go to hell because of God. He went to hell because of me. He went down there and, and he said, all right, now, what does he owe? I want to pay everything. How many of you know in the natural that is unbelievable? Why in the world would somebody want to do something like that for me? I've told you all this time and again. But Paul says, you know, if I could go to hell for all the Jews, I would. If I could go to hell for you, I wouldn't. I love you, but I... <laughs> I don't love you enough to go to hell for you. Jesus did. But you see, I mean, you don't accept me for salvation. You accept Jesus. And, and you know, I mean, he did this because he loved us. And you say, well, you know, I mean, if you're ugly, God ain't going to love you. 
Who told you that? The natural man. We hear it constantly. If you don't do everything that you're supposed to do, God don't love you. God loved you before you ever did anything. And still loved you regardless of whether you've done anything or not. How many of you know he loved you just as much as if, if you have not accepted him than he does if you have accepted him? You see, we make all kinds of rules and regulations for God. In other words, if you don't do this, God ain't going to do that. It is not scriptural. God so loved the world that he gave his most precious son that we might have life and that we could have it abundantly. You know, I mean, but the way that we hear people talk, we think, well, you know, God's the thief. Jesus says, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. All right? Let's go through that. The thief comes to kill. Well, God took my mama. God took my baby. God took my child. So he qualifies in one area. Steal. Well, you know, I mean, God doesn't want you to have anything because you get too proud. So he's going to take all of that from you and you could be poor. You know what the gospel says? You don't have to be poor no more. Amen. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Well, you know, when that tornado came through, God sent it. It is an act of God. It's a lie from hell. So what we have done is come to the place where Jesus says the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And, and we've said that this is what God does. Not my God. He said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. What's the gospel? The good news. What is good news? You don't have to be poor no more. You don't have to be sick. You don't have to t die because your time is here. You know, I hear this constantly. Well, you're going if your time is there. I don't believe that. I don't believe you've got a certain time to go unless God tells you. Now, God told me, I was getting ready to go one time, and God told me, <laughs> I was saying, well, this prophet told me that three years of greatness and then going out with a bang. And I was telling everybody I was going. And said, he said, well, why don't you just go ahead? <laughs> then the Lord came back to me. And he said, I'm not ready for you yet. I got a lot of stuff for you to do. Now, he says, if you insist, I'll let you go. How many of you know I didn't insist? <laughs> but you see, we, we got this misconceived idea that, boy, when your day comes, you're going. 
You know what the Bible says? He who had the power of death, that is the devil. Okay? I told you all this. This old man went to Daniel Cooper's church and he had cancer. <clears throat> and he had been in the bed, I think three months he hadn't walked. And he was in the hospital. <coughs> And Daniel was going to see him that morning. And Daniel said he started praying. And the Lord told him, you go tell him that if, if he wants to, he can come home today. But if he wants to be healed, he can be healed. So Daniel went in the man's room. And he said, well, brother, the Lord said you could go home and be with him today or else you could be healed. He said, well, I want to be healed. So Daniel laid hands on him and prayed for him. And Daniel hollered, stand up. And the old man jumped out of the bed. Hadn't been out of the bed in three months. And it was a young fella that had been in a wreck, was in the bed next to him. Daniel said he looked and he was standing up too. <laughs> he said, what are you doing standing up? He said, you said stand up. <laughs> Both of them went home. I'll go ahead and finish the story. He said, a week or so later, he was back in the hospital and walking down the aisle, and he heard somebody say, Reverend Cooper. And he said, I knew who it was. It was that old man's doctor. And I didn't like him. So I played like I didn't hear him. He said, I went on down to, and I come back, and he said, Reverend Cooper. And he said, I knew that he knew that I heard him, so I went in. I said, yes, sir. He said, the doctor told him, I've got a cancer in the back of my head. But if you pray the same prayer for me that you did for that old man, I'll be healed. Daniel said he laid his hands on him and prayed the prayer, and the doctor was healed. But you see, Satan doesn't set the time anymore. We set it. Now, like I told you before, sin causes circumstances. If we do things that causes us to have heart conditions or cancer or whatever, we cause it. God didn't put it there. It's Satan's attack on you, and he's using methods, consequences of what we do and the way we live. So you see, I've got to come to the price to where it doesn't make any difference what the world says or what Satan says. I'm going by what the Word says. You see? And so, somebody asked me, <laughs> somebody asked me the other day, said, Rev, when you go retire, I said, when my toes turn up. I said, God didn't call me to retire. He called me to preach. So you see, I mean, it's whatever we set our heart to. You know, I want to be obedient. This is, this is one thing I always try to do. Now, don't get me wrong. I argue with God, and I fuss, and I carry on. But I'm obedient. I finally do what he says. Just like um, 
Jesus was telling the story about the man that had two sons. And he told one of them, he said, I want you to go work in the field today. And the boy said, I ain't going to work in no field. And he went to the other one. And he said, I want you to go work in the field today. And that one said, okay, I'll go work in the field. But he didn't go. But the first one, after he thought about it, he went in the field and worked. And then Jesus said, which one is justified by God? The one that was obedient. He was not happy about it, but he was obedient. You see, you know what the Bible says? Obedience is better than sacrifice. You know, I mean, the thing about it is, we need to come to the place to where I want to I wanna do what God wants me to do. I, I want to be obedient. I started this in the early 60s. God, I want to be what you want me to be. And he ain't stopped yet. Chuck McNeil told me the other day, he said, I'm glad God chews you out like he does me. He said, but then when I hear you talking, it chews me out again. <laughs> so, so you see, I mean, God deals with all of us. None of us are exempt. Some refuse to hear. But you see, these things that we have been called to do, just like 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I, I know most of you know all of these scriptures, but I like for us to look at them every once in a while. All right? 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore... If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Now, how many of you know that if Colossians 1.13 hadn't been done first, 2 Corinthians 5.17 wouldn't work. We had to be delivered out of the power of darkness. We had to be delivered from the power of Satan and to be translated into his marvelous light. And then, at this time, at this time, therefore, if any man be in Christ. In other words, at the moment that I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, I'm a new creature. I don't have to change the way I look. I don't have to change the way I dress. I don't have to change the way I talk. I don't have to change anything for that moment that I become a child of God. And at that moment, I become the righteousness of God in Christ. You see, then... God wants me to begin to do something. He, he, wants, he wants my mind. We are spirit, soul, and body. I am a spirit. My mind and my mental facilities is my soul. And I live in a house. And he wants my soul and my spirit to come into harmony. Now, when this happens, the body will begin to come into place. But as long as the body can get the mind to agree with him, he ain't going to come nowhere. Okay? Some of you grinning like you know exactly what I'm talking about. Amen. But you see, then I, I've got to come to the place to where I have to do something about this. What do I have to do? Be not conformed to the world. Don't walk like the world walks. Don't act like the world acts. Don't talk like the world talks. But be transformed 
by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, this is where the soulish area and the spirit man comes into unity. When I can get this mind renewed to the extent to know where my spirit man is, then things begin to happen. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not something that's immediate. It is a process. You see? It, it's a process of going through the things that we go through each day. And this is the way that we grow spiritually as well as physically. We don't be born one day and be adults the next day. The same way it is with Christianity. We have to begin to develop, to grow into. And this redemption that God has given us is a perfect redemption. I mean, it, it has brought us out of the power and the authority of hell and made us members of the family of God, children, children of God. God becomes my daddy. Heaven becomes my home. You see, so the Holy Spirit bears witness with my spirit that I'm a child of God. You see, but then this child has to develop. So every day we need to seek ways to develop this child into sonship and daughtership and take responsibility in the body of Christ. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you and praise you for your presence. We thank you that the word is going forth, that it's not going to return void, but it will perform that which it was sent to do. And we thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Let's stand to our feet now, if you would, please. And if any of you have a need for prayer, if you come up, I'll be glad to pray with you.